Chevron Gas Station invites you to... Let George Do It. Brought to you by the makers of Chevron Supreme Gasoline and RPM Motor Oil. crime that needs solving? Have a dog that needs walking? Have a wife that needs spanking? Let George do it. George Valentine put that ad in the paper, opened an office, and waited for the clients to pour in. He was mildly successful, but for the past few days, nobody has entered his office except his secretary, Claire, and her brother, Sonny, his self-appointed assistant. Not one to worry, George has decided that they need some relaxation. Now we find them driving in the country looking for a place to picnic. Here? Not enough trees. Keep going, Miss Valentine. Claire, I'm starved. I want this picnic to be perfect. We must have just the right spot. Oh. Here? Too flat. I want a hill. Keep going. Don't listen to her, Mr. Valentine, or we'll die a horrible death. Imagine the irony. They'll look in the car and see a picnic basket. Fried chicken, potato salad, deviled eggs, and three emaciated bodies. How about here? There's no stream of water. Keep going. Oh, Mr. Oh. Valentine, I'm in agony. After all, I'm still a growing boy. How can I grow when nobody feeds me? Why are you stopping? Because we're going to have our picnic right here. All right, last stop. Everybody out. Mr. Valentine, you can't be serious. Picnic in somebody's front yard? Well, why not? There are trees, grass, a hill. And if you want a stream of water, just ring their doorbell and tell them you're thirsty. I think it's a swell idea. I won't get out of the car. Well, suit yourself. Hand me the basket, Sonny. You bet. Mr. Valentine, I promise. We'll stop at the very next place that looks good. There's nothing wrong with this spot. I like it. But it's private property. We'll be chased off. The place is deserted, didn't you notice, Claire? It's all boarded up. Nobody home. The perfect spot for a picnic. Chicken legs, Sonny. Wait a minute. I fixed that lunch. Well, then come on and join us. And if you behave yourself, I... I may even let you sit next to me. Oh, give me that basket. I'll serve. All right, then snap into it. Oh, all right. Nick? Not on an empty stomach. Mr. Valentine. Care for wings? Make that two wings and you made a sale. There's nothing I like better than chicken wings. You know, when I was a kid, I... Ow! What's the matter? Hey, somebody hit me. Come on now, which one of you is guilty? Who hit me? I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, look. Somebody threw a shoe at you. I told you we shouldn't have stopped here. Well, how do you like that? A lady slipper. Where do you suppose it came from? Oh, from the house, of course. Look up there on the second floor. I don't see anything. Well, there's a window open over to the right. Hey, and I thought the place was deserted. Mr. Valentine, there's a note tied to this slipper. Hey, what does it say? Yeah. A note written in lipstick. Hmm, intriguing. Well, don't keep it to yourself. Read it. Uh, I am being held prisoner in this house. Please save me. Well, a maiden in distress. Now, that's silly. Uh -huh. Cute little slipper. Five double A. Hmm, a teeth. Somebody's trying to play a joke on you. Written in orange lipstick. Hey, she must be a blonde. See you later. Mr. Valentine, where are you going? To rescue the maiden, of course. Yeah, but do you think it's on the level? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. Now, Mr. Valentine, somebody's trying to make a fool out of you. Well, I'm in the mood for it. Wait a minute. You must go, then I'm going with you. You may need help. You may be up against a gang. Are you thinking of the gang or the orange lipstick? What are you thinking of? That's the leading question. Come on, to the rescue. La, la, la. Gee, do you think we'll have to break the door down, Mr. Valentine? <laughs> Only as a last resort, Sonny. I've always wanted to see someone break down a door. Hey, this is kind of exciting. What was that? It sounded like a bell. Well, where'd it come from? Gee, because I'm sorry, Mr. Valentine. I guess I leaned on the doorbell. Oh, sorry. Mr. Valentine, I hear someone coming to the door. All right, now you two keep mom. I'll do the talking. Well, well, what do you want? Oh, I, I'm very sorry to disturb you, madam. I, I didn't think there was anyone here. The place is boarded up. That's not your affair at all. Now, what do you want? What are you doing here? 
Uh, well, uh, we're uh, having a little car trouble. Would you mind if I used your phone? I certainly would. You can't come in. But, madam, we just... Anyway, the phone is uh, out of order. Yes, it's been disconnected. Now, get away from here. Oh, now, wait a minute, lady. Don't close the door. I have nothing else to say to you. Get off my property immediately. Well, what a nice even temper. She almost slammed that door on my nose. Well, Mr. Valentine, now are you satisfied? Nothing wrong in there. She was just an old lady. What about the slipper and the note written in lipstick? Maybe it didn't even come from this house. It's the only one around for miles. Hey, maybe somebody tossed it out of a tree. Oh, a squirrel? Anyway, it's none of your affair. Let's get away from here. Oh, Claire, where's your sense of chivalry? Well, then why don't you go to the police? Now, there's a sensible suggestion. Why bother the police until I find out what this is all about? Remember, I earn my living getting people out of trouble. But, Mr. Valentine, you don't have a client. Oh, yes, I have. It's 5AA. If you asked me to save her, you saw the note. Yeah, but that old lady won't let you in the door. Well, then I won't use the door. Mr. Valentine, what are you going to do? Nothing. Until it gets dark. Come on, kids. Let's have our picnic. Now be careful. Yep. Quiet. I'm all right. Yeah, but do you think the trellis will hold you? You're full of chicken. Gotta hold me. Climbing up a trellis at your age. Yeah. Very romantic. I feel like a cross between Romeo and Robin Hood. Mr. Valentine. Just a little slippery. <laughs> How do you know you can get in that window? Oh, I'll get in. I used to be a vacuum cleaner salesman. <laughs> what are we supposed to do while you're selling a vacuum cleaner? Just stay there. If I don't come out in half an hour, get the cop. It's all right. It's not locked. Some drop if it's foot slips. Sonny, keep quiet. He'd be splattered all over the flagstone walk. Sonny. He'd make quite a splash. Sonny. It's all right. Got in. I don't like this. Breaking into someone's house. Oh, you got to hand it to him, sis. He's pretty brave at that. It's the orange lipstick. Too bad it wasn't a man's shoe. He'd have kept right on eating chicken. I wonder what he's doing now. Probably looking for the other slipper. Maybe it belonged to that old lady. Well, I'm not going to stand out here all evening. This is ridiculous. Sonny, ring the bell. Oh, now, Claire, you'll spoil everything. You heard what he said. It's not a half hour yet. All right. All right, come on in. But don't make any noise. Is it okay? What happened? Nothing. The coast is clear. Nobody around but the old woman. And she's in the front room playing solitaire. Come on. What are we going to do? Upstairs. Follow me. And take it easy. Golly. I don't like this. It's kind of a spooky house. Keep quiet. Okay. All right, now we'll start with these rooms. Sonny, are you game? Yeah, well, I... Yeah, I guess so. What do I have to do, Mr. Valentine? You take the rooms to the right of the stairway. Try the doors. If you come across one that's locked, let me know. You got it? Um, where would you be? I'm going to look over the rooms on the other side. Claire, you better come along with me. Well, maybe she ought to come with me. I mean, just for company. No. I want to look after her. You think something's going to happen? Now, Sonny, if you're afraid, just say so. Oh, I'm not afraid. Just cautious, that's all. Okay, then. Get going. Come on, Claire. I'm right behind you, Mr. Valentine. Oh, I wish I could whistle. Well, here's the door. Go on, Sonny, open it. Just put your hand on the knob and turn it. Oh, it would be the squeaky door. Oh, it's just somebody's bedroom. Nothing in here. Oh, let's take another door. Oh, this is pretty easy. Well, go ahead, Sonny. Open it. Yeah, it's locked. <laughs> well, there's a key in the door. Darn it. Come on, Sonny. Unlock it. Be brave. Oh, 
dark in here. Oh, oh. oh, pardon me. I didn't know there was anybody in here. Gee, for a minute I thought, there was somebody in there. I'm getting out of here. Mr. Valentine. Mr. Valentine. Keep quiet and come in. Close that door. Ooh. What's the matter with you, Sonny? What happened? Oh, nothing much. I, I just heard somebody moaning, that's all. Moaning? Who was it? Did you see anybody? I didn't wait to investigate. Oh, all right. Stay here with Claire. I'll have a look around. Oh, I'm going with you. Now, Claire, you might get in my way. You'll be safe here. Just... Mr. Valentine. The light. That's oh, all right. The lights went off, that's all. Now, now, don't get excited. But it's so dark. Well, somebody's having fun with a switch. You think the light went out all over the house? I don't know. Maybe. Come on. We're getting out of here. Darn it. What's the matter? The door's locked. But it can't be. I just walked in. Well, somebody must have been following you and locked the door after you. You mean somebody's been watching us all this time? Yeah, it looks that way. And they've locked us in the room. Oh, what'll they do to us? Now, Claire, remember, you're not the hysterical type. Oh, I'll try to remember. Good girl. Say, what size shoe do you wear? Maybe you can throw it out the window. Mr. Valentine, I'm not really frightened. Would you mind just sort of holding... Oh, a pleasure. <laughs> Where are you? Here. And I'm here. <laughs> Do I have to hold your hand, too? Say, there must be another way out of this room. Got any matches? I never used them. Oh, and I left my lighter in the car. There isn't any other way out. How do you know, Sonny? I didn't say anything. Claire, is your voice changing? I didn't say anything. Well, then who said that? Where did that voice come from? Don't waste time trying to find me, because I'm not in the room with you. In five minutes, the lights will go on. The door will be unlocked. You'd better get out of here if you want to stay healthy. Jeepers. You've got just five minutes to think it over. That's all. Mr. Valentine, we're going to do just what that voice said. Mr. Valentine, did you hear me? I think we better, Mr. Valentine. It sounded like it meant it. Mr. Valentine. And what about Miss 5AA and the moaning you heard? Well, you can report that to the police. When it's too late to do anything? After all, it's not our affair, Mr. Valentine. She really isn't our client. Well, what's that got to do with it? You'd risk our lives just because of a slipper and an orange lipstick. <sighs> okay, okay, maybe you're right, Claire. Of course I'm right. Sure she is. Okay, okay. Claire, you and Sonny get out of the car. Better drive straight to the police. What about you? I'll stay here and... Look around a bit. I see. Sonny? Yes, sis? You go down to the car. Better drive straight to the police. Claire, what about you? I'll help Mr. Valentine. Look around a bit. Oh. Well, I guess the car will be safe enough just where it is. But, Sonny! I'll help you help Mr. Valentine. Look around a bit. Looks like George is in a tight spot this time. While he looks around a bit, and while Claire and Sonny help him, let me bring you an interesting bit of information. They tell me that surveys are all the rage these days. Anytime a businessman runs into a problem, he just runs a survey and gets all the answers from his adding machine. So I thought I'd run a little one-man survey of my own and find out why people like to do business at Chevron gas stations. Well, it turns out that folks find Chevron dealers mighty nice to do business with. First, they like the friendly, competent service they get at Chevron gas stations. And second, they know that they can get famous Chevron Supreme gasoline and RPM motor oil at Cream Green and Burgundy stations all through the West. Just one thing I'd like to add. The Chevron dealer in your neighborhood operates his own business. He's on his own, and his success depends on keeping you a satisfied customer. That's your best guarantee of a warm welcome when you stop at a Chevron gas station this weekend. But George, Claire, and Sonny have been warned by a mysterious voice that they'd better get out of the house, and within five minutes... Now the time is up, and George is just reaching for the doorknob. Yep, it's unlocked, all right. Come on. I want it to look as if we're leaving the house. So, Claire, you and Sonny start to walk down the stairs. But slowly, understand? And what would you do? I want to check up on that moaning. Now, Sonny, point out that room to me. Um, it's right over there, Mr. Valentine. The one next to the top of the stairs. Good. All right, start going down. But slowly. I wish I'd never thought of a picnic. Oh, 
Don't worry, sis. I'll look after you. Hey, wait for me. Not so fast. Why couldn't I have suggested a movie? Or even bowling? Slower, sis. Oh, I wish he'd come downstairs with us instead of poking around up there. He doesn't know how many people he made. <laughs> that, that came from downstairs. Claire, Claire, are you all right? It wasn't Claire. It was someone downstairs. Let me go ahead. Sonny, stay with him. Okay. The living room's over this way. Please, Mr. Valentine, be careful. Now, where's that Red King buried? Suffering cat, she's still playing solitaire. She acts as if nothing happened. Yeah, well, it may be a stall. Sorry to interrupt you, madam, but the game is up. Well, I guess you're right. I can't win without the Red King. <gasps> it's you! What are you doing in this house? I told you the phone is disconnected. Look, what do you say we stop pretending? Who screamed? Screamed? Oh, you mean the radio. I was listening to a program, but it frightened me, so I turned it off. After who locked the door on us, Mr. Valentine? Yes. And what about that voice? Look, lady, I'll admit we have no business here, but that's not important now. Someone locked us in a room. Then we heard a voice. It seemed to come over a loudspeaker. I'm sure I don't know what in the world you're... Oh, Roland, of course. That boy will be the death of me. Boy? Did you say boy? I never should have given him that detective set. Roland! Roland! Come downstairs, you naughty boy! Now, wait a minute. I don't get this. It's my grandson. He fancies himself an amateur detective. He has this whole house rigged up with microphones and speakers and, well, always playing tricks on me. Roland! I was just going to bed, Grandmother, honest. Now you go upstairs this minute and go right straight to bed, understand? No more good tricks. Oh, the very idea. I'll be good, Grandmother, I promise. Good night. Do you... Do you mean to tell me that that kid... <laughs> He's your maiden in distress, Mr. Valentine. <laughs> yeah, he really had you going, huh? <laughs> okay, okay, the joke's on me. I'm very sorry, madam... Maybe I made a little mistake. You have been a little ridiculous, young man. All right. Forgive us for barging in on you. Come on, kids. Let's get out of here. Quick. <laughs> and to think you even climbed a trellis to rescue her. <laughs> All right. All right. Go ahead. Have your fun. <laughs> I still say the whole thing is pretty fishy. <laughs> Some mystery. Just an old lady and a little boy who likes to play tricks. Uh huh. Think so? Mr. Valentine, what do you mean? Aren't you satisfied yet? No. No, I'm not satisfied at all. What about the note? It was feminine handwriting, I'd swear to that. Maybe the note came with his detective set. Uh huh. I wonder if his detective set included a big black cigar. Cigar? Sure. Didn't you notice it on the ashtray in the living room? Well, there's no accounting for some people. Maybe it belonged to the old woman. She didn't look the type. And why are they living in a house that's boarded up? What do you say we talk about it on the way home? Oh, no, Claire. I have a better idea. Suppose you two wait in the car for me. Oh, Mr. Valentine, you're not going back in that house again. This time, I'm going around the back way and have a look. Then I'm going with you. Well, here we go again. Count me in, too. Okay, but you've got to be quiet. I hope no one sees us. It would be a moonlit night. The moonlight is very becoming to you, Claire. On you, it looks nice. Hey, this is no time for that kind of stuff. Huh? Always in there pitching, though. Stay careful now. Stay behind this tree. The light coming from somewhere. Yeah, the kitchen. Hey, there's someone in there, Mr. Valentine. Uh-huh, I see him. Well, it's the boy detective, Roland. Hey, look at him. My, my, my. What a sweet, innocent little child. Smoking a cigar. How awful. Doesn't he know that'll stunt his growth? Not his, Sonny. He'll never grow any taller. Do you mean he... Mr. Valentine, he's a midget. A midget? Of course. I knew it all along. He turned out the light. He's going in the other room. Come on, let's see about this window. Hey, we're in luck. It's not locked. Mr. Valentine, are you sure you want to go in there? Of course. Can't give up now. What do you think you'll accomplish? I'm surprised at you, Claire. Don't you remember your fairy stories? Here's the slipper. I'm Prince Charming. So, got to find Cinderella. Okay, the coast is clear upstairs. Come on. Where'd the midget go? Did you see him? He's in the living room with the old lady. Now, Sonny, which room did the moaning come from? Um, let's see. First I went into this room, and then I went into that room. Or did I go into that one first and then this one? Well, make up your mind. Why don't you look in both rooms, Mr. Valentine? <laughs> Brilliant suggestion. Okay, no noise now. 
I seem to remember the creak in this door. Where's the light switch? Oh, here it is. Well, there's no one in here. I guess the moaning came from the other room. Hey, wait a minute. Here's the mate to that slipper. Now I've got two shoes. You can open up a shoe store. Mr. Valentine. What is it, Claire? Look, on that chair, it's... It's a whip. Oh, and cat, that looks like it would hurt. A big black whip. The kind Simon Legree used. Oh, Mr. Valentine... You think that someone's been using it on Miss 5AA? Uh-oh, we'd better not waste any more time. Come on, we'll try the other room. Shh, quiet now. Hey, is this the door, Sonny? Yeah, I'm pretty sure the moaning came from this room. Hey, it isn't locked. It was locked before. I'm sure it was. Never mind, let me go first. I think that's a fine idea. The light switch is over to the left. Close the door. Now, let's see. Mr. Valentine, look. Hmm? There's someone lying on the bed. Hey, it's a girl. Miss Five Double A. Is she? No. No, she's all right. Sleeping soundly, though. Maybe she's been drugged. Pardon me for mentioning it, Mr. Valentine, but she's not exactly petite. In fact, she's... She's enormous. <laughs> well, that just goes to show you. You can never tell by the size of the shoe. Who's in here? Who is it? Now, don't be frightened, miss. We came to help you. Who are you? Prince Charming. Who? You threw a slipper out of the window, didn't you, with a note on it? Did you find it? Yes, I've got the slipper. And you've come to help me. Thank heaven. Oh, please. Please get me out of this house. They're torturing me. Oh, Mr. Valentine, the poor girl. There, you see what I tell you. Now, don't you worry. You're going to be all right. We'll take care of you. You've got to get me away from them. Is there anyone in this house besides the midget and the old lady? Not so far as I know. Oh, please, you will help me get away from them. I can't take any more. Now, now, pull yourself together. Look, there's a trellis outside this window. We'll help you climb down it. Well, excuse me, Mr. Valentine, but it'll never hold her. Oh. Yeah, you're right, son. You won't leave me? No, no, of course not. We'll get you out of here some way. Tiny! Tiny! Hey, there's that voice again. Roland's up to his old trick. She's going to torture me again. I know it. Now, now, take it easy. We're here. Tiny, listen. Hear that, Tiny? Hear the sizzling? He's going to start that again. How do you like that sizzling sound, Tiny? Ah, brown and crisp. Oh, Mr. Valentine, listen to that. Stop them. Can you hear the juice running out? Oh, how horrible. Oh, jeepers. Just the way you like it, Tiny. A thick, juicy steak. Steak? Hey. Say, what is oh, this? Oh, stop him. With mashed potatoes, swimming in gravy, hot biscuits and strawberry oh, jelly. Oh, please, stop him. Butterscotch pie, a pitcher of I milk. I can't stand it. Neither can I. And a chocolate cake. We'll be waiting for you in the dining room, time. Hurry down. I can't hold out any longer. I've got to give in. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's this all about? What kind of torture is this anyway? Say, who are you? Don't you recognize me? I'm tiny, you know, with the circus. The circus? I used to be the fattest woman in the business. That was before I went on a diet. Now I'm down to 310. Oh, a mere shadow. That's right. They were afraid I'd ruin my career, so they locked me in here, and they've been torturing me ever since. Torturing you? How? By trying to force me to break my diet and eat again. I still don't get it. Who are they? Who's the midget and the old lady? He's a clown, and she's the lion tamer. Oh, I thought you could crack a whip. We found this place boarded up, so we decided to move in until the circus opens oh. again. No wonder they tried to get rid of us. They didn't want any to, anyone to know they were living here. But I don't understand. Tiny, why did you want to ruin your career? Why did you want to die? Well, you should understand. You're a woman. Romance has never entered my life. I thought that maybe if I got thin, well, thinner, someone, somewhere, well, somehow I might have just one fleeting moment of romance. And then I could go back to the circus and be happy with my memories. Hasn't anyone ever looked at you twice? They'd have to look at her twice to take her all in. <laughs> Sonny, will you shut up? Well, once something wonderful almost happened to me. It was very beautiful. He thought he was in love with me, and I thought I was in love with him. Who was he? The tattooed man in the circus. But it wasn't destined to last. Oh, why not? Well, you see, he said that when he fell in love, he was going to have the girl of his dreams tattooed on his chest. Yes? His chest wasn't big enough. <laughs> oh, Tiny. That was my only experience with romance. Oh, well, I wouldn't exactly say that, Tiny. I know a man who risked his life for you. You're joking. Joking? Listen, I climbed a trellis and almost broke my neck. I was locked in a room. I was threatened. But I, I stayed anyway. 
just to bring you your slipper. Why were you so anxious to bring it to me? Well, because it's it's the most beautiful slipper I ever saw. You have very dainty feet, honey. Dainty feet? Well, well, that's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. It's something I can treasure all my life. Well, then, there's your memory. Yes. Whenever I'm unhappy, I'll think of what you said. Dainty feet. Now can you go back to your career? Of course, I can start eating again. For one little moment, romance entered into my life. I'll never forget you. Oh, that's all right. Oh, my Prince Charming. Oh, now, wait a minute. I've got a reward, Hey, you. what's up? Don't be shy. Oh, my Prince Charming. I swear, help. This isn't the way home. Where are you taking us now, Prince Charming? Never mind. Yeah, but it's late and I'm hungry. Jeepers, did you hear that menu? Steak, mashed potatoes. Hey, are you going to a restaurant? I'm going to a doctor. I better have him look me over. She must have cracked all my ribs. <laughs> and my Adam's apple doesn't go up and down like it should. What does it matter? Just so it had a happy ending. Jack? Like the storybook. Suffering cats, what a day. All we went through for a few cracked ribs. And a crushed larynx. Oh, cut it out, will you? We saved a career, didn't we? Now Tiny will be satisfied to be what she was meant to be. Maybe it's my practical mind, Mr. Valentine. Maybe I shouldn't even mention it. But you are in business, you know. The next time you go after a client, will you please see to it that you collect a fee? Why, Clara, what are you talking about? I did get my fee. You mean that... that kiss? No, no, of course not. Here, take a look. There's one for each of us. Isn't it terrific? Free passes to the circus. <laughs> George will be back in a moment. Meanwhile, since I was knee-high to a gopher, I've been told that it takes all kinds of people to make a world. But I've been finding out for myself lately that a lot of the best of them are doing business under a Chevron gas station sign. All through the West, I've found that you can pretty generally count on smart, cheerful service when you swing into a Chevron gas station. The reason is simple. Chevron gas stations are home-owned. Chances are the fellow who waits on you is the owner. Naturally, he's going to be mighty careful to give you the best his business has to offer. And there's another good reason for stopping at the Cream Green and Burgundy stations. They all handle climate-tailored Chevron Supreme gasoline and RPM compounded motor oil. Try them if you're out for a drive this weekend. And remember, your Chevron credit card is good as gold at a Chevron gas station. <laughs> Next week at this time, George Valentine has an unusual problem. You'll probably hear something like this. Why are you so excited, Mr. Valentine? All you have to do is find Mr. Williams a wife. Yes, but it's got to be a wife who'll love his little Dolores. Dolores? Yes, and all her little brothers and sisters. All her brothers and sisters? A big family, huh? How many has Mr. Williams got? Fifty-seven. Fifty-seven children? No, fifty-seven pigs. <laughs> Chevron Gas Stations all through the West invite you to be with us again next week for another chapter of Let George Do It, brought to you by the makers of Chevron Supreme Gasoline. Let George Do It, starring Robert Bailey as George, with Francis Robinson as Claire and Eddie Firestone Jr. as Sonny, is written by Pauline Hopkins, produced and directed by Owen Vincent. Others in the cast were Martha Wentworth as Susan, Tommy Bernard as Roland, and Monty Margetts as Tiny. The music was composed and conducted by Charles Dant, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.